got a very large clamp on CT from the Formula Vitamata electric power board. This was used for uh, measurements up to 3.3 kV and uh, connected it up to this meter. Uh, I'll go on more details shortly, but uh, it's set on 150 to 5. Watch the air meter. So 75 ampere, while the base load here is 75 ampere. This thing is big, heavy, but it's actually very accurate. There's a lot of steel in it. I'll go on some more details shortly on this device. Cleaning up a workshop is sometimes fun because you find all types of goodies I never thought I had. This is another classic meter from made by National Analog. Got all scale. I'll show, I'll show it shortly in, in uh, more detail. So 60 ampere and I've got an analog pointer on it. So I'll stick this here next to the big whopper. Hopefully the reading is visible. Um, I'll click it to the other setting and hopefully it is on the right scale. So that reads about 70 ampere as well. I get a bit better close up on the dial. It's pretty dark. Um, flick it back to the 60 scale so we go full. The load is about 70 ampere here. There you go, so it's off the scale. Beautiful little instrument been thrown out and I'll salvage that at the right time. So the load measured here is about uh, 60, 75 ampere. More or less the same on this meter. Pity about the shade but hopefully it's visible. Well here we've got a large uh, clamp on device, very well made. Plug it first, and hopefully we get uh, good readings on this device here. Here we got some uh, nameplate data. I'll try to zoom into it a bit more. Um, this uh, device is rated for uh, 150, 300, 600 ampere. Terminals is um, K is common. It's for German, and an L3, L2, L1. So we've got these uh, connections here, L1, L2, L3 and K. So, so here we've got the secondary connections for a meter, L1, L2, so that's a 600, 300 ampere tap, 150 ampere tap and K is common. So my little M meter I used on this previous test was connected up to the K, that's common. A lot of uh, English CTs have C. And then it goes into here and it's wired straight into the ammeter. Um, these leads are okay, these other clip on leads are a bit too thin, but normally for a 5 ammeter you should lose at least 2.5, maybe even 4 mil, depends how long the run of the wires is. So this meter is scaled 150 to 5, which is perfectly matched for the 150 tip. So this is K, normally the main cable comes in here, L comes out to the load. Um, I don't think it's that critical when you have an M meter on there, um, what way you put the CT in, but when you have a watt meter it makes a difference because the watt meter needs to measure correctly and if the phasing is out it's uh, not giving a good uh, reading. So it's a well made device. The core, let's have a look at this. It got a, sh a shutter plate on there, but you can see those laminations have been damaged a little bit. And the same on the other side here. So it's, uh, and hopefully you can see it as here and there. So it's basically two half section C shapes, which make a closed loop when the device is uh, closed. The accuracy class is probably between 3 and 5 percent. Is a Closed current transformator like one of these is always better. But for load survey measurements, and I remember done that in the Vitamata power board in the mid 90s, we used uh, these clamp CTs for temporary survey meters around transformer cables, connect them onto a kilowatt hour maximum demand meter, or even uh, the earlier type of data loggers. 
this is uh, English Electric uh, CT I think it came out of a substation um, I just have a close look what the ratios are, I can't see it from here I think it's 800, 400 to 1 ampere yeah, I'm not exactly sure where it came from but uh, it is a big uh, CT a lot of uh, copper and uh, iron in here so it's actually quite an uh, accurate CT and here we got this uh, classic national clip on M meter and uh, it does even volts as well and it's got a rotary dial give you voltage ratings and 600 and ohm scale as well quite amazing actually and I'm surprised how accurate the device is and this is a needle stop so you can see the block the needle it's a little clip on device I'm gonna use it more in the future I didn't even know I had it but I found it while cleaning stuff up so it's quite nice another thing I forgot to say about these little beautiful analog meters you don't need batteries to operate them so they're a real good backup instrument uh, then your digital LCD meter runs out of puff next I'll be doing a dial test and showing you the difference between a direct reading meter and a CT operated meter this is a direct reading meter and here we got a CT operated meter this single phase meter is rated scaled for 200 to 5 which is written here another meter runs to be a reverse way but I'll correct it shortly so when that meter clocks up uh, 10 units the above meter would have uh, recorded 10 units so uh, yeah CT meter but you'd only uh, measure a fraction of the current so this meter carries all the currents which is about 70 ampere and that meter is a ratio 200 to 5 so that sits on about about 1.8 ampere so that's cruising but it still records the same amount of units okay I've connected the CT meter on and it's now energized I'll wait till the dial runs up to the zero it's now sitting at uh, 19 the last two digits so uh, 19 it's going up to zero zero with the top meter and then we'll do 10 units uh, for the accuracy test and hopefully these meters are pretty close um, the thing I have to say the potential calls are not separated out so they the one meter may record a little bit more but the principle is there that uh, the proof of the fact is that the 200 to 5 ampere meter like this one is is a direct reading dial so the, the meter is geared for uh, two readings at 200 ampere CTs so this meter was uh, connected upside to 100 ampere CTs the reading had to be in that case divided by two or if it was 400 ampere CTs, 400 to 5, then the readings had to be multiplied by 2 in this particular case I may expand out on it uh, a bit more in another video at some stage but um, I thought this uh, hopefully gives the idea a couple of interesting clip on air meters in uh, a few CT devices I okay, have nearly there, I'll wait till this meter runs over to 1800 and then I'll zoom into the bottom one. The load is about 100 ampere, which will drop down to about 60. That's for the click. Well, that's the direct reading meter. Now we go to the CT meter, which is a 200 to 5 direct reading meter, which we're sitting here, set up here. And let's come on camera, stay here. and we concentrate on the last two digits uh, that's uh, 2020 the total reading on this meter is uh, 387320 so we concentrate on the last two digits so when we advance 10 units on the CT meter CT meter here it should be the same as on the meter which you saw in the beginning so we'll see uh, how well it's going to perform it probably takes about uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, so we'll see how we go.
just uh, zoom in on the nameplate a bit more here. So we've got uh, 200 to 5 ampere, 50 cycles. A bit of glare, I don't want to help anything about it at the moment. So, And the load on the circuit is at the moment, let's have a look what it is. 94 ampere at the moment going through these meters. Drop the current down to 63 ampere, which doesn't matter for the meters because loads going up and down in buildings anyway. It's mainly for my uh, faithful Bell South meter, which is not that happy. It's getting pretty warm. Here, I don't see if you can see it, but uh, there's a bit of condensation in there. It's just a 60 ampere meter, so yeah, it's been worked a bit hard. Okay, we recorded one unit on the direct reading meter, and we'll check here with the CT direct reading meter sits on 21, so it's going well. Well, here you've got a bit of a setup just to show how CTs are. So we've got a CT here, CT there. The main cables coming through there, so the main power goes through the main cables, and then the CT current transformer the wires go from there to the metering. Often the smaller CT is used to the metering, and in this particular case we've got a big CT here which needs to allow for fault currents that drives the protection relay. So I haven't matched these up, but the principle is the current comes out of the CT, goes through the ammeter coil out of there, goes through the watt meter which will have a voltage coil in there as well, and it measures that component of the electrical circuit. And then we've got a protection relay here which sits on a big uh, CT. This has a lot more iron because of fault currents etc. It has to operate a relay satisfactory. Um, I will make a video of this uh, protection relays, how they work. Also, I've got a few different uh, electromechanical devices which are really cool if you see how they work and operate and what they do. So yeah. I leave the video the way it is. I may do a little sketch uh, how a secondary wiring is done to a normal CT. So yeah. So, uh, keep it like this for now. Cheers. Quick thing, uh, Ben Gardner, another YouTuber, asked me making a uh, clamp on meter from parts. Uh, you could try an uh, old E section, make this your primary coil, and you divide a certain amount of secondary turns on there um, and match that with a sensor, sensor, uh, sensitive uh, volt or ammeter and just calibrate it with a known source. And yeah, this is not the right piece for it, but just make it like a closed uh, loop basically, and then it's, that should work to pick up uh, measure currents. Okay, we're nearly on nine. Good. And the CT meter here is 29, so that's good. We're perfectly in step. I'll run it exactly up to 10 units, and then uh, yeah, we close this experiment off, and I'll uh, we'll put this video on the net. Well, this test run, uh, we nearly done 10 kilowatt hours and uh, the meters are perfectly in step. So, a CT meter with a direct scale dial or a whole current meter, direct reading. Uh, you could have even had a blank 5 meter which would have recorded like uh, 1 40th of the total basically. Of 10 units, that would be 250 watt hours. There we go. So that's uh, clocked up 10 units exactly. Now we go to the bottom meter and that has clone recorded also exactly 10 units here. That's gone up to 30. So yeah. That's the one I'm going to close this video off. Thanks uh, for watching. Rodolco 2007. On a Sunday, sunny afternoon. In Titiranji.